Did you know that there is a business expense that could cost you thousands of dollars every single year, but it's hidden? You can't see it, and it's not immediately obvious. We're going to talk about that hidden business expense this year and how it can change your life dramatically once you realize what it is, see it for what it is, and start making business decisions based on it. Welcome into another episode of the Subscription Web Design Podcast. I'm Steve Schramm, and I drive the boat around here, and I'm excited to talk to you about the subject matter. Now, I'm just going to spoil it for you right off the bat, tell you what it is, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit and some of the details that go into it. What I'm talking about, this hidden business expense that could cost you thousands, is opportunity costs. And what this comes down to is the scarcity of resources and realizing that there are trade-offs when it comes to anything and everything that you do, okay? And there are some things that in business, when you have these opportunity costs and these trade-offs that you need to make, and when it comes to opportunity costs and making these decisions, there are some things that you can rely on to help you be a guide in making these decisions, some principles and some things to think about. That's what I'd like to give you here on this episode of the podcast. So first of all, it's this idea that money is not limited, but time is. Money is not limited, but time is. This is one of the uh, fundamental things that takes a long time to learn when it comes to doing uh, business because immediately it's counterintuitive. Well, you don't have unlimited money, right? I mean, you just you, you can't get access to unlimited money. I certainly can't get access to unlimited money. And so what gives? That doesn't seem accurate. Well, let's start with what we know is true, and then I think this will make sense to you. We know that time is limited. We know that ultimately time is measurable. We know that as human beings, we have a certain amount of time on average that we will live. And ultimately time does run out. And whatever you decide to do with your time, there's time that you cannot ever get back. So it's precious, it's scarce, and it's a resource that we must take seriously. Money, though, is a renewable resource, especially when you have a subscription web design business that operates on recurring revenue. When a client pays you this month, they're also going to pay you next month, and the month after, and the month after, and the month after, for as long as they're recurring, at least uh, contracted, and then for even beyond the contract, hopefully as well, if you're doing what we teach. So money, in a sense, is not limited, okay? You can get access to more money. That money will renew every month. As you get more clients, that's more money that will come in. And so it is a better investment of resources when you can spend money to accomplish something than your time. And this is something that business owners eventually do tend to learn, is that their time becomes more and more valuable the more it can be leveraged, okay? An example of this. So for me, I recently just handed over the editing of this podcast to Jalene. Hey, Jalene, she is editing this podcast for me. And that is something that I used to do. Now she's happy to do it and I pay her to do it. And that used to take me a very, very long time each week. I invested a lot of time in editing the podcast, making sure it was good, uploading it, writing all the copy, putting together the thumbnail, and doing all these different things. Now, did I mind doing it? No, but there are other things that I need to be doing with my time that that was taking time away from. So I turned that over to Jeline and started spending money on it instead of time. And the thing about the money is, is that that resource renews. And even though I spend money on Jeline every time she does these edits, next month I get that money back and maybe even more so. For example, if you um, are listening to this podcast and then you decide, hey, I'd like to go check out what he's got to offer. You go, you get on my email list, and then I send you these emails, and you say, yep, I think I want to invest in his program, and you sign up for my program, then the podcast just paid for itself. Do you see how that works? And then it pays for itself every single month. And so that is the power and the importance of realizing that your money is not limited, but your time is. And so when it comes to opportunity costs, it makes a lot more sense to be able to put money away and put money into things than it does to put your time into them. All right, that's the first thing to think about. All right, next, you need to understand that there are different kinds of opportunities and they all 
cost, okay? They all cost. So I wrote down business opportunities, family opportunities, personal opportunities, and community opportunities. Now, there may even be more than this, but business, family, personal, and community, okay? These are all different realms of your life where opportunities are. And it would be a mistake to think of them as entirely separate because they really do interplay off of one another. So if you uh, decide to start a new business, that business is going to affect your opportunity cost in those other areas, in what you could do with your family, in what you could do with your personal, in what you could do with your community. Okay. For example, you um, may have less time, at least in the immediate after starting a new business to do things with your family, but uh, what you do will invest more seeds into the future to where you could maybe take them on a nice vacation or uh, you will be able to have money to then give to people who are hurting and needy in your community, right? So opportunity costs and, and trade-offs, okay? Um, there is, I mean, the biggest trade-off that people make every single day, uh, especially business owners, is when they're going to have a lifestyle business versus when they're going to grow a big company, okay? Oftentimes, a lifestyle business is the kind of thing where you can pretty much do as you please. And and just for what it's worth, my business is more of a lifestyle business than anything else. Yes, I'm, I'm growing a company, but it's all uh, remote. And um, I don't have set, you know, there's no like set amount of time that I'm going to sit in front of my computer or that my team is going to sit in front of their computer. If something needs to be done that day, um, then, you know, we go do it or they go do it. I don't police what they're doing. They have to leave and go pick up kids and drop off kids from school and stuff just like I do. And so um, it's that that ultimate um, being able to decide based on your lifestyle what you want to do. Now, I could have an office building somewhere. I could hire people. I could potentially build a lot bigger company if I were to do that kind of thing if I wanted to. Uh, but I don't really want to, right? Uh, I'm not at that phase of, of life and business. I don't want to create a business that actually creates for me another job, okay? So even though I'm involved in a lot of things and there's different things that I do, and uh, of course, I want to grow my companies, I want to do so in the context of my lifestyle, okay? Um, if I wanted a full-time job, I would just go get one, right? Because I don't want a full-time job. I actually organize my time and my life and my money and my opportunity costs and all of that stuff. It's all... Uh, being calculated in my head and on paper um, to, uh, yeah, to make those decisions and to build the kind of business that I want instead of forcing myself into the kind of business that is going to uh, shackle me, uh, excuse me, uh, chain me or, or shackle me, okay? So uh, very important that you make decisions based on those different kinds of opportunities and realize that when you decide to do one thing, you can't do another, okay? You can't, uh, ha you know, have a meeting with a client well, I was going to say you can't have a meeting with a client and go play golf. Ironically, though, you can, right? You actually could go have a golf meeting. So, I mean, you can't do a webinar or, you know, an online meeting or something like that while you are um, playing golf or playing video games or whatever have you. So uh, you do need to um, realize that those opportunity costs are there and make your decisions based on that. All right. The next thing is that it cuts both ways, okay? There are times to take risks and times to conserve. and this is something that is a little different for each and every business. After doing this for a while, you may start to learn what periods of the year are actually a little bit more profitable, a little bit more lucrative. New clients come on board uh, versus the times of year where that's not so much the case, where maybe sales are down, business is down a little bit, you're not doing as much, your clients aren't needing as much from you, et cetera. So um, uh, here's a really just great example in my business where this is playing out right now, okay? So I just got a quote from my local radio station, of all things, for some advertising that can be done there. And uh, they gave me three packages, each of which on a uh, basically a monthly uh, retainer, right? And uh, each of the packages uh, seemed fair, okay? Nothing about them seemed unfair. Uh, the lowest package, which is probably the one that I would want to start with, is um, it's, it, the price range is is reasonable. Okay. It's, it's not what I'd really, where I'd really like to be with it. Like I, I wish it was a little bit less than it currently is, but it's also not so much that it's like totally outside of the realm of things. We had a really good October, um, in the agency. And so, yep, probably it would work. Okay. But I know I want to commit to it for at least the, the next three months. And, um, obviously we've got our recurring base of, of, of steady income that we have here. But we don't have any additional work lined up yet, with the exception of a couple small things, um, 
for the next few months. I, I'd really like to see a really good sized project come in, right? A, a bigger subscription web design project come in um, that was sort of solidifying my mind that, yeah, we can do that, okay? So there's opportunity cost here, okay? I am deciding not to do some advertising based on the cost that it currently is uh, for a moment, okay? I have decided to take at least until the 15th of this month and see what happens, okay? And if, I, if what I see is um, positive, then I'm going to go forward with it. If what I see is either baseline or even negative, then I'm not, right? And so that's kind of where I'm at. And that's how I'm using my current situation to sort of make those decisions. So there's time to take risks. So there's times to take risks and times to conserve. In the moment, I'm choosing to conserve, but depending on what it looks like, if I can just get a little bit, you know, feel a little bit better about it, then I might go ahead and take the risk. So um, it's okay. You just need to be aware of where you're at and be thinking through these things and these opportunities that you have because, again, they all cost. And then the last thing, and this one is a little bit, again, more motivational in nature, a little bit less tactical, but just stay engaged. Keep your eyes wide open. Seek counsel with other people. If you're into prayer, pray, right? Like, don't drift. Don't drift. Stay driven. Stay engaged. Look at the pulse of your business. Don't give up. Don't, um, don't not take it seriously, okay? You are in business, and you're supporting your family, and you are uh, helping your community, and you're doing fantastic things. Stay with it. Stay engaged. Don't give up. Like, it's so important to keep your eyes wide open and alert because, look, the economy is rough. Um, it's tough out there, right? The, the, uh, you need to be alert for the opportunities is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, a, a few weeks ago, I'm not sure exactly when this will go out relative to, to the other podcasts that I recorded, but a few weeks ago, I believe we had um, uh, my new friend Adam on to talk about his particular subscription web design model. Look, it might be time like, to consider the opportunity cost of pivoting into his model, which was a template driven model with just a, a you know lower price point few hours of work per site template driven like it, it was a really really cool model and it's a little different than the one that i uh, typically prefer but i think it's neat you know and and it's the kind of thing that yeah you might want to consider going into that and there's going to be some opportunity cost in getting all of that set up and you know the time it takes to do that but is it worth it i don't know you have to consider that for your business but stay engaged and always be thinking about that next thing don't just be head down in the work okay because if you're only ever head down in the work then you can't grow and you, you can't mold that vision and execute on that vision to get to where you want to go. I hope this has been a helpful episode for you. I would love for you to go to subscriptionwebdesign.com, download my exclusive five models training where I talk about the different kinds of models that are available to you in subscription web design and how to get started with setting those up completely for free. I'll send you lots of email tips and everything too after you sign up as well. All right, God bless you guys. Take care and we'll see you in the next episode.